to issue a warning before I do the following movie review. There's no rescue team, it's just me. Yes, there's no rescue team, it's just me. One of many great and classic lines from Rambo First Blood Part 2. Yes, the exciting action-packed sequel to 1982's Rambo First Blood starring Sylvester Stallone as John J. Rambo. So this sequel came out in 1985 and it was directed by George Cosmatos, a very talented director who later go on to direct the movie Tombstone, which, is, which was an epic Western movie as well. So let's get right into it. So first off, I did a review of Rambo First Blood. I love that movie. Gave it a 10 out of 10, and we'll get right into it. Uh, character Rambo, created by David Morrell, a, actually a Canadian author, who came out with his first book, First Blood. Yes. So... The story told basically a uh, John Rambo, a ex Green Beret Special Forces soldier, came back from the Vietnam War, came back to the United States, and wasn't welcomed with open arms by any means. Matter of fact, he goes into a town called Hope, Washington, which is actually filmed in Hope, British Columbia, and he runs into a corrupt sheriff by the name of Will Teasel and his corrupt deputy sheriffs, which bully, taunt, and push Rambo into a corner where he comes out fighting using his special skills and guerrilla warfare techniques in the deep terrain, mountain terrain in the Forest of Hope. Fantastic movie, very original, also very vulnerable movie, which um, brings PTSD to the forefront, in, which had never really been done before in movies, showing uh, the character Rambo and the struggles he would struggle with with his mentor, Colonel Troutman. So, very good movie, I highly recommend it. Uh, I have to mention, David Morrell wrote the book for that movie, was quite involved in that movie. But after that, uh, Rambo kind of took on a life of his own. Um, David Morrell will come back to write the novelizations after the fact, so he never wrote the screenplay. So the screenplay for this movie was actually done by uh, Sylvester Stallone and another guy by the name of James Cameron. Yes, James Cameron, who would later go on to direct Terminator 2, Judgment Day, go on to do the Titanic, Avatar, fantastic guy. But him and Stallone kind of different in their techniques doing the screenplay. So James Cameron wrote his original screenplay, and then Stallone changed a few things and came out with this movie. So let's get into this movie. First of all, as we know at the end of First Blood, Rambo surrendered to the authorities, even though I think he was in the right. He would end up going, going off to a military prison. So before I get into this review of Rambo First Blood Part 2, there is going to be some spoilers because I really want to get in and dissect this movie. I'll try and keep my spoilers limited, but if you've never seen this movie, I recommend you go and see the movie and then come back and watch my review. Okay, so the movie opens up with Rambo in a military prison and his mentor, Colonel Sam Troutman, portrayed by veteran actor Richard Crenna, comes to that prison and says, look, I'm sorry you're here. I've tried to do what I can to get you out of here, and I've got a mission if you're interested that'll, that'll uh, get you out of here, essentially. Uh, it's a top secret covert mission to search for uh, American prisoner of wars that are still being held captive in Vietnam. And during the filming of this movie, I have to say, it's true. There was over 2,500 uh, American soldiers unaccounted for from the Vietnam War that were believed to still being held captive as prisoner of war, uh, a.k.a. POWs in Vietnam. So they did touch on a realistic subject here. So Rambo agrees to do this mission. Uh, we then see Rambo and Troutman, They're, uh, they end up in Thailand in a covert CIA uh, military base, and we're introduced some more characters here. Uh, we're introduced to uh, the character of, character of Marshall Murdoch, uh, CIA commander-in-chief, very corrupt, very slimy, and I'll get into that. He's played by uh, veteran actor Charles Napier, and he does a bang-up job. He's also got a second in command, his name's Erickson. He's portrayed by legendary actor Martin Cove. Yes, the original John Kreese from the Karate Kid movie and the Cobra Kai series. He plays a former soldier turned mercenary who's kind of Murdoch's right-hand man. Now, they bring Rambo and Troutman into this situation, and they basically spell the mission. It's very simple. They have uh, strategic aerial photographs of uh, suspected Vietnam Vietnamese camps in Vietnam that may have POWs in there, and that Rambo is going to parachute in He's going to take his camera, yes, a camera, and take photographs for evidence and leave. And under no circumstances is he to engage the enemy. And Rambo kind of says, you just want me to leave the American soldiers there? But and Murdoch says, yeah, you were there strictly for photographs. If something is found there, I'll send a Delta Force unit commanded by Colonel Troutman to extract these prisoners. 
Simple enough. So we get to see Rambo get ready. He chooses his weapons. Uh, Murdoch's big on the computerized uh, version of weapons now, like using computers. And Rambo's um, determined that his mind is the best weapon. Uh, we also see a Rambo here that's more stoic, but he's he's also not very emotional in this movie. As a matter of fact, uh, there's only a few words spoken by Stallone in this, but there was a purpose for that. Um, anyway, so he goes in the mission. He's going to meet up with a uh, Vietnamese intelligence officer, and he essentially parachutes into uh, the Badlands, as uh, Erickson calls it on the plane trip. Welcome back to Badlands. Parachutes there. He meets with his... Uh, his counterpart there, uh, intelligence officer Co, portrayed by actress uh, Julia Nixon. She does a really bang up job here. Now there's some backstories here, and it's really cool to see these two during some downtime in this movie explain their backgrounds. To which uh, this character of Co explains that her father was murdered, and she she replaced him in the uh, agency as a Vietnamese operative for the intelligence agency. And uh, and Rambo kind of says, "Look, I'm expendable. The reason I'm here is if something happens to me, nobody really cares." They talk about their good luck charms, which is cool. So he points to her jade necklace, which she says is her good luck charm. She then asks him, what's your good luck charm? And he pulls out his huge Rambo knife and says, I guess this. So that's cool. Now we get into the camp. It's really cool how they get in there. And again, 35 minutes in this movie, nobody's killed. But that'll soon change. Anyways, he gets in the camp and he realizes the camp's actually full. They've actually got American POWs in the camp they go to. Uh, and one is particularly being tortured. So Rambo makes a decision, you know, I'm going to free this prisoner and take him. And it's a very realistic uh, portrayal of these POW soldiers. They're down to the bone. They haven't eaten well. They're in a cave uh, surrounded by Vietnamese guards, and they've got rats crawling over them. So he frees one, and there's an, there's an extraction point at a hilltop where they have to be there by a specific amount of time. Now, the action in the sequences start is, becomes like a roller coaster, literally. It's quite entertaining. Um, and he gets to the hilltop with the prisoner. I will say, when I first saw this movie, I was a teenager, and again, maybe I was a little naive back then, I didn't see the twist coming in this movie. I think if I saw it now as an adult, I might suspect it. But anyways, at the time, I didn't. And what it is, basically, is that Murdoch has set up Rambo from the beginning. He sent him to an area he didn't, had no idea there would be prisoners to simply take photos of an empty camp. He can report it back to Congress. Case closed. That's what Murdoch truly wants. But Rambo now has found a POW, brought them back. So on the helicopter ride with the extraction team, Troutman's there with the other mercenaries. And they go over the radio, essentially, that Rambo's there and he's got a POW. Now, everybody erupts and cheers at the military base, the actual soldiers, to which Murdoch kicks them out, gets on the microphone and tells the head mercenary, Erickson, to abort the mission, to abandon Rambo and the POW. Troutman can't believe his ears. He then says, no, you're landing this now. And they point guns at Troutman, basically saying you're under arrest. Um, and they abort. And you see the, the, the face of Rambo as the helicopter leaves. And he's being betrayed, this time, by his own country. And him and the POW are quickly taken into custody again. And this is where it becomes interesting. We get to meet some other villains in this movie. Uh, the uh, Lieutenant Tay is kind of the leader of the Vietnamese army for that prison camp. He's portrayed by a really good actor, George Chung, who's been a veteran of many, many films. And he's quite brutal as a Vietnamese commander. Um, and then we're introduced to the fact that the Vietnamese are working together with the Russians. Uh, and then we're t looking at a character by the name of Podvotsky, and he's portrayed by Stephen Burkhoff. Does a bang-up job here as leader of that Russian army. And the, between the two of them, the two armies teamed up. They decide to torture Rambo to extract information out of him. And they quickly realize that he's a combat vet. Like, he's not giving up easy. The torture goes on. Now, at some point, they're able to radio the frequency into Murdoch and his base. And Murdoch's trying to play up like, oh, I'm glad Rambo, you're alive, which you know he doesn't care. But the coolest scene in this movie, and great line I'll never forget, as, as he's trying to talk to Rambo, Rambo grabs the microphone and says, Murdoch, I'm coming to get you. Yes. Classic line, thunder in the background, great scene, and the action just erupts from there. Now, I got to say, the escape scene's really good. Something does tragically happen in this movie to alter Rambo, and I will say that Rambo's on the verge of escaping this army that's hunting him, but he makes a decision. He's not going to escape. He's going to go right back at them, and that is awesome. He starts to hunt them, and I will say, there's a great scene in the movie where a soldier is looking around, a Russian soldier, 
and all you see is a, a wall of mud behind that soldier and you see an eye open and Rambo is hiding in the mud. He comes out and takes down this soldier. And then he starts dispatching and hunting these bad guys one after another, uh, killing a vast majority of these, uh, these bad guys. Some really good epic scenes involving a helicopter, a cliff. I won't get into that. I'll jump right to the uh, get into the conclusion. It's really cool. He gets to face up against Murdoch towards the end of the movie. And I got to say, there is some great, great, great lines in this movie. Um, and I think one of them might be this one. You know there's more men out there. You know where they are. Find them. Or I'll find you. That's right. So he has a great showdown with Murdoch at the end. And there's more of a, um, a long-winded speech he says to Troutman at the end. When Troutman says, don't hate your country, and we get into this. Oh. Now I gotta say, I'm a huge Rambo fan, and I have proof of that. I have here a sealed action figure of John J. Rambo from this particular sequel. It's fantastic. I loved it. Now I gotta say, as a kid, I probably loved it more because I really didn't look at whether this could be realistic or not. I just loved the action. But really dissecting it now, I do have to say, it's a great action movie. Don't get me wrong. But he's become a little too cartoonish in this movie. A little larger than life. And in later interviews, in uh, 2007, I believe, Stallone was on the Graham Norton talk show, and he actually admitted it was one of his least favorite movies because he thought he was becoming too cartoonish. And there's a lot of vanity here. And what I mean by that, we're, Stallone's in the best shape of his life for this movie. Uh, he's ripped and everything. And it's kind of more vanity, you know, the shots of how great Rambo looks and stuff like that. So those are some other cons. And I'm really picking at cons because overall it's a good movie. Um... The other interesting tidbit, this was never filmed in Vietnam or Thailand. It was actually filmed in Mexico, which is quite interesting, um, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, some other tidbits, uh, Lee Marvin was actually uh, going to be Murdoch, and then he pulled out last second, and Stephen Burkhoff was replaced by him. Um, there's just some really cool uh, trivia here behind this movie. Uh, it's The film's also dedicated to Cliff uh, Wenger Jr., who's a stuntman. He was killed during the filming of this movie, tragically, during one of the action scenes. Um, and at the time of the filming, like I mentioned, there was actually 2,500 vets still missing behind enemy lines in Vietnam. Uh, Stallone took this movie seriously. i got to say, I've watched interviews, I've done some research. He spent approximately eight months of training, four hours a day, uh, with uh, actual members of the SWAT team during combat sessions, archery and survival skills. And I will say... He became a master archer by the end of this movie in real life. And to this day, he's fantastic. I and mean, you see it in some of the sequel movies. Definitely Rambo 3, Rambo, uh, Rambo 4, and Rambo Last Blood. He uses a skill set there too. Very good with his knives here. Every weapon's used. But more than ever, we get to see him use like huge machine guns. He's blasting people. So that becomes really cool too. But there's just so much cool trivia with this movie. Um, they were also going to cast Dolph Lundgren as... Uh, as Lieutenant Colonel Pavosky, the main Russian bad guy. Uh, but at the last second, they decided, well, hang on, he's Ivan Drago and Rocky IV. They came out the exact same year. So that'd be kind of strange if he was in both movies. I was also the only Rambo movie, the complete series, to ever have an Oscar nomination. I think it was for sound effects and special effects. Uh, the guy who played Murdoch, Charles Napier, after the movie was made, people would come up to him and say, I hate you so much for the way you treated Rambo. And he's like, look, it was just a, I was just an actor. You know, it's not for real. Um, and I guess o the opening James Cameron's original screenplay was they were going to find instead of finding Rambo in the prison in the beginning he was going to be in a psychiatric hospital but they opted out of that one and James Cameron actually took that idea and put it into Terminator 2 Judgment Day where he saw Sarah Connor in a psychiatric hospital so some interesting uh, some interesting tidbits here too um, and again nobody dies until the 34 minute mark but that obviously soon changes um, when they shot the arrows, Rambo shot the arrows, they were actually on wire so that nobody got hurt. So I thought that was pretty cool. Temperatures were scorching during the filming of this movie, um, making it almost unbearable to film. Um, and then I heard that Stallone was the last guy to go to sleep during filming the first one up. So he'd get like three hours sleep and he'd be up working out for three hours before filming. 
and just go right into the character, physically be physically exhaustive. Um, we see Rambo's history here. They talk about his special forces background, that he's from Bowie, Arizona. So we're introduced to that, that he's uh, half Indian German descent. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then he has 59 confirmed kills during his entire war in Vietnam. Now, hang on a second. This movie, which takes place over, I believe, a period of two days, he's got 74 confirmed kills. So he goes from just killing 59 people over a few years in Vietnam to killing people in two days, uh, making it 74. So that's a little kind of silly. Uh, the other interesting thing is Rocky IV came out the same year. Um, in, in that movie, he fought Ivan Drago, a Russian. At the end, there was a huge speech that uh, Rocky delivers about, hey, we can all get along. It's better than uh, two people killing each other in the ring rather than 70 million people. You know, talking about peace between Russia and the United States. In the same year, he does this movie where he's sla slaughtering countless Russian soldiers. So I find it be kind of amusing that way. But still, a highly entertaining movie by all means. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a really good, it's a really good movie. I, I enjoyed it. Um, what do I give Rambo First Blood Part 2 on a scale of 1 to 10? I don't give it a 10 out of 10 like I did with Rambo First Blood, but I give it an 8 out of 10. It is a good movie. It's a good movie. Unfortunately, um, the Rambo movies would kind of decline after this one. Rambo 3, I'll do a review of that one. I didn't enjoy Rambo 3 nearly as much as I enjoyed this or, or Rambo First Blood. But I will say Rambo 4 redeemed itself. I enjoy that movie. Unfortunately, Rambo Last Blood, which I've done a review on as well. You could check it out. Sadly, was my least favorite of the series. Obviously, Rambo First Blood's my favorite. I'm going to have to say it's a toss-up between this particular movie, Part 2, and Rambo 4, uh, vying for... Um, for top spot this movie was a box office smash i mean this is at stallone's peak of his career this movie was fantastic i believe he was 39 years old when he filmed it but he was in meticulous shape for this movie as he was in rocky four it came out the same year too um it is a little comical in the fact he runs around with his shirt off but i guess when you got a physique like that you know it doesn't really matter right but, uh, it, and I mean, it makes sense because he was captured as a prisoner. He didn't have a shirt on. He escapes, you know, obviously he can't get clothes or whatever. But, you know, uh, David Morrell, the author, described it as a great action movie combined with Tarzan. Uh, the neat thing, though, I, I respect about Stallone. He created Rocky. So he's got respect for people that create characters. And even though David Morrell didn't have anything to do with the sequels, he had the common courtesy call Morrell before e doing each movie and ask his consent. And I read an interview with David Morrell where he quite respects Stallone. And he actually said that when his adult son, I guess, was terminally ill in the 90s um, with cancer, unfortunately, uh, when Stallone found out, and again, his son's a huge Rambo fan himself, Stallone actually, you know, uh, called up Morrell's son and spoke to him for quite a length of time. And, and David Morrell says he never forgot that, how much of a class act that Stallone was. Um, so you know what? It's a good movie. It's a good movie. Check it out. Um, it's part of the Rambo series. I quite like it. But again, the only cons I can really pick out is, is they start to make him a little too cartoonish. Not campy, but the fact that he's almost invincible like the Terminator. Whereas we saw kind of a different version of that character in the original Rambo First Blood, which is a little more realistic. Uh, the other tidbit of this movie, President Ronald Reagan, who was president at the time of this, loves this movie. Or loved the movie at the time. He's passed on now. But uh, this movie stands the test of time. I mean, I, I've watched it over 100 times, and I love it. It's just a, it's just a fun, um, action-packed roller coaster of a movie with a minor message at the end. But uh, anyways, I give thumbs up. Rambo, First Blood Part 2, recommend it. Anyways, let me know what you think of this movie or thought of this movie. Leave in the comments below. Subscribe, like my channel. All right, see you later.